Welcome to Pod Band Pipecast, the premier pipe band podcast. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Thank you again for being on the show. Um, oh, for the listeners back home who didn't hear last week's episode, I don't know why you're on this episode. Go back and listen to last week's episode. <laughs> we have again uh, Mr. Michael McClanathan here, and he's talking about last time he talked about piping and being a piper, a solo piper, and bands that he's been in and all that. And now this episode, he's going to talk about his uh, his kilt Highland Wear Supply companies, um, which we'll just jump right into and have him tell us about that. So what is Claymore Imports and its sister company, Total USA? Well, Claymore Imports started about 1995. Um, I was teaching students to play and there wasn't really much in the way of internet at all back then. And so they needed supplies. So I started importing supplies and making relationships with people over there to import things. And so, you know, one thing leads to another and then I'm importing things and then the internet gets big and then it's like, well, now you have an internet site and all that. So it just, just kind of grew like that. And uh, the kilt rental part of it was, uh, that was a different story really. Um, I had been importing things, but not renting kilts. And uh, I was at a bridal show one year and the grooms kept coming up to me and asking me, I want to wear a, an outfit like that. Where can I rent that? And I said, I don't know. I'll look around. So I said, probably on the internet, you know, so I, I started doing some research on the internet. Uh, and there was a handful of companies doing it at that time, but they weren't doing it really the way I would do it. They weren't doing a complete package, uh, like they give you a kilt and jacket and you had to buy a shirt and you had to buy socks and you, the shoes were not even an option. You had to find your own shoes and all that. I thought people just want a one-stop shop. I want that outfit, send it to me. So I thought I could do this. And so the, the, next, uh, the next bridal show I went to, I took a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and a Sharpie. And I wrote, we have kilt rentals and hung it up on the back of the booth. And my wife said, you're crazy. We don't even have any kilts. <laughs> but I said, I know how, where to get them. And, <laughs> it, you know, nobody plans their wedding for next week. You know, they plan it out months in advance. And so I said, yeah. I have time to get them in. So I got two weddings out of that. And I ordered the kilts for those weddings and then just went on from there. So I guess our, um, our next question was going to be, why did you want to start a kilt rental and Highland wear supply company in Arizona? But really it's, you went to the, um, you went to those bridal shows, right? And, and there was kind of demand for it, right? Yeah, yeah. But the, the other reason was that, yeah. It, back at that time, there weren't many pipers playing gigs, and I was doing quite a lot, and it was really supporting my life, really, at that point. But uh, I, I knew there was a lot more moving into the area. I was teaching people. There was going to be a lot more pipers around in the future. And so if I wanted to keep in this business of piping and all that, then I had to have some other method of income stream. So I thought that would be it. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I think it's interesting how, yeah, you being in a pipe band, you know, there's not much around here. Like <laughs> people need stuff. And, and I think it was Len Wood when we interviewed him, he even said the same thing. He's like, yeah, back probably even early 90s it was like where do you get some of this stuff yeah that fans need and then even a little bit later even when you have the internet it's like 
people don't know where to get stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we sell on Amazon and all that stuff. So yeah, it's crazy. Awesome. And you have a storefront too, right? Yes. Yes. We have a storefront in the air park in Scottsdale and, um, Then we sell, you know, through the, the website and Amazon and all the other ways. Cool. So the shop, the shop is the shop is on, on Redfield, uh, 7655 East Redfield, but you know, anybody can find it through the through the website, the address and all that. So yeah, do you want to uh, give us your address? I mean, I know people Google things now. Claymore yeah. more import rental USA, but yeah, it's just uh, ClaymoreImports.com and KiltRentalUSA.com. All right. Um, so I know we touched on it a little bit already, but how did you get the business started initially and what does it look like today? Well, uh, we bought another company in California last week. Um, and we've bought three companies last year uh, so it's really grown a lot um, uh, we bought Blanford imports last year and uh, we bought all the inventory from La Caron uh, USA and wow. yeah it was a lot and are those, uh, will those all be storefronts or are those mostly online businesses uh, well that's all just uh, all of that is added to the inventory that we have here now. Uh, yeah, I didn't, we, we bought a company in New Jersey too last year and uh, we thought about, well, we could set up a business there in New Jersey by just going and leaving the inventory there and doing that, but nobody wanted to go to New Jersey, so. <laughs> I don't blame me, them. Me included. <laughs> I mean, I've never been to New Jersey, but I imagine it's cold and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and far and far and not Arizona. So, right. right. Um, well, so by now you've done this, um, you know, Highland Wear Supply Company companies for quite a while. What are some challenges that you've faced? Um, with that, I mean, any challenges specifically from being in Arizona or just challenges in general from this type of business? Well, yeah, in, in Arizona, um, there's not that much demand. I mean, it, in New Jersey, there would have been a lot more demand with all the bands and everything else around that area and the, the, the population being more dense and everything like that. But uh, so it, it's, turned out that a lot of our business is done online. And that's mm -hmm. why we could grow to be as big a company as we are now and uh, be based in Arizona because only 10% or less of our business is in, is in Arizona. Mm -hmm. so all the rest of it's online. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so... We've heard that you've outfitted some well-known people like the Property Brothers that we talked about last episode. How did, how did those kind of things come about? Well, like I was telling you before, uh, Drew found us through the website. Uh, he liked the jackets we had. Um, yeah, we've, geez, we've done all, things all over the place. We, we've outfitted bands all over the country here and in Canada and um, people have rented outfits uh, and taken them back to Scotland to Ireland to France all all over the world to, to get married and so uh, but it's all you know because of the online presence that's really cool um so talking about you know we asked you last episode about what your favorite piping moments are. What are some of your favorite moments with um, kilt and uniform rental and, you know, kilt rental USA and Claymore, <clears throat> all of these other companies that you're now the, the head of? 
Well, I don't have a story as touching as the last one. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, was, that was hard to beat. Uh, but playing the wedding in Italy was was amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I played a wedding in uh, the Scilly Islands off uh, the coast of England. I played a wedding in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, the one in Italy, just standing under, they had this big little gazebo kind of thing, you know, and they had all this white wisteria just solid hanging all down from the ceiling of this thing and i don't know if you've ever smelled wisteria but it's very sweet and very nice and standing under there playing breathing in the all that wisteria and playing for them there and, and walking down the aisle yeah that's something i'll never forget wow next question thank you Oh, that's no, me. just kind of me. Second to last question, yes. actually, because I have another one. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, what's your number one tip for people looking to wear a tilt for their wedding or any special events? The number one tip would be get something made in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much bad stuff out there made in Pakistan. And there's, there's uh, if you go online looking for rentals, uh, there's a place in the south that's been around quite a few years and his rentals are made in Pakistan mm -hmm. and he says on the website they're authentic Highland wear which I don't like lying to people you know I mean if you're going to do that just be right up front and say well this isn't the real deal but it's you know it, it's it's what we true. have you know yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> the odd thing is it's not really only a few dollars cheaper than ours and ours is mm -hmm. all made in Scotland but that's the thing you you want something that's that's going to honor your heritage and look right and not be some bad stuff so just do, you get, do, do your research and <laughs> find something really that's made there you know do you give like fashion tips to people like what if they wanted some particular tartan and some particular you know color of jacket that really doesn't look good together are you like oh <laughs> or do you just kind of okay well fashion is kind of like art it's something different to everyone you know it's, yeah. it's an opinion and all that so if they want to do something a particular way that's that's up to them but yeah i would give them tips on things and uh uh, we we have one outfit that's called back in black that's that's all black the the kilt is a black on black tartan and sometimes we've rented that out to groomsmen and they've used a hot pink tie because the <laughs> girls were the, the girls were wearing the hot pink and mm -hmm. and it, it it looked nice in the pictures and all that but it just seems weird a hot pink tie and a black outfit killed outfit i don't know it's not my deal but yeah, yeah. they like it. so great i would you're like i wouldn't do that but go ahead <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> all the bridezillas are like okay <laughs> i get what i want <laughs> yeah there's a few of those run into a few bridezillas so um, clearly you got, because you mentioned all the, you know, companies that you've been buying and stuff you're getting figured out. Uh, so you got a lot good cooking over the next little bit here, but what are you most excited for over the next couple of years? Hmm. Personally, it would be going back to France and Italy and playing with the bands that I played over there in 2019 and couldn't go last year or this year. Um, that was a lot of fun. Made friends over there. And the, the thing that was so crazy about that was these people aren't Scottish. They're, they're native French and native Italian people, but they're just crazy about bagpipes and kilts and they have Rabbi Burns dinners and it's just, 
it's wild, really. But it it was a lot of fun. Uh, as far as the business goes, um, just hoping the world will return to normal so everything can. So for so long, all weddings and events were all just shut down and we had nothing going on. So that was a that was a rough year in 20. So yeah, especially as someone who rents things for special occasions. You know, yeah. that. Well, we had uh, a lot of them cancel. A lot of them put them on pause because they had already paid for their rentals and uh, their rescheduling. Just got an email from one of them that was uh, in 20 and they're rescheduled to 21. And then because of the Delta variant, they're deathly afraid that everybody's going to die from that. So now they're scheduling it to 22. So, oh, wow. yeah, wow. Two years later. Geez. Wait, two years to get married. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's good. That's good of you to offer them to reschedule and not just, yeah. I mean, some companies have been just been like, no, nope, you, you set your date, you rescheduled once, that's it. That's all you get. Well, and, and if somebody gives us money and it's not going to happen, we'll, we'll give it back. I mean, we're not going to take their money for nothing, you know, so. Yeah, that's nice. Well, it's a pretty pretty exciting times then as soon as things do go back to normal <laughs> yeah this year has been actually pretty good though it's 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 come back a lot so yeah. yeah yeah have hope for the future well thank you again for being on the show and uh, oh, you're welcome thanks for yeah. having me yeah this has been a lot of fun a lot of interesting and now we know you better and we can say hi the next time we see you at the games <laughs> which will happen one day <laughs> There will be another Highland Games one day. <laughs> I hope it's this next year. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. One day. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Okay. Well, everyone back at home, uh, thank you for listening, as always. And we hope to be in your ears again soon. <laughs> ears and faces. <laughs> ears and faces and, and everything. So, yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this show, then support us on Patreon for exclusive content, as well as the video of us recording this. We'll have special exercises we'll be writing, as well as tips and tricks with tenor drumming and other instruments to come. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube for some tenor tutorials and possibly other tutorials later on. Um, and like us on Facebook at Podman Podcast.